people have to live in, in unity. We are still in transition. Civil society has been decimated. Of course we rely on media. And I think the government has not done enough. The international community has failed to respond. No place in the world is perfect. Hello viewers, I'm your host Shivangi Mishra with another episode of South Asia Focus. Let's begin the show. In a significant gesture aimed at fostering cultural and religious ties, India facilitated the uniting of Buddhist nations through the exhibition of Buddha relics in Thailand. This symbolizes a deep-rooted connection of India with countries with Buddhist heritage, promoting mutual understanding and cooperation. We have this report. Thailand, a predominantly Buddhist nation, holds immense reverence for relics associated with Gautam Buddha, the founder of Buddhism. India recently exhibited Buddha relics in temples across Thailand to promote religious harmony and cultural understanding on the global stage. It highlights the significance of Buddhism as a unifying force that transcends national boundaries and fosters connection among diverse communities. For Thailand, hosting the exhibition of Buddha relics holds immense spiritual and cultural significance, reaffirming the country's reverence for Gautam Buddha and strengthening its ties with India, a key partner in promoting Buddhist heritage and values. It's an eye-opener for all of us because uh, we never expected such a rousing uh, sort of welcome by, by the people of Thailand. In fact, uh, in the first 10 days uh, of uh, the relics uh, exposition in uh, Bangkok, uh, more than a million people visited the relic. And at the end of the entire tour, about uh, 4 million people attended to the relic. So I think it was a very symbolic thing and it was really an eye-opener for us. Emotional and sentimental bonds which the Thais have with Buddhism and India and India's values of wisdom, core principles of peace, harmony and Buddha's teaching of mindfulness, all of this is very relevant uh, in this context and I think we have been successful in transferring in a way uh, the blessings of the Buddha. The arrival of Buddha relics in Thailand from India sparked a profound outpouring of devotion as countless devotees paid their respect to these sacred artifacts. In temples and exhibition halls across Thailand, devotees from all walks of life gather to offer their obeisance to the Buddha relics, expressing their heartfelt reverence and gratitude. The relics served as a focal point for meditation and reflection, inspiring individuals to contemplate the profound wisdom and compassion embodied by the Buddha. For many devotees, the opportunity to pay homage to the Buddha relics was a once-in-a-lifetime experience filled with a sense of awe and reverence. The presence of these relics in Thailand served to reaffirm the country's deep-rooted connection to Buddhism and its role as a spiritual centre for followers of the faith. India has been extremely helpful in our bad, in our bad times, uh, and especially recently when the economy uh, there was there were challenges with the economy, uh, and India was the first off the mark to do to come forward and help us. So this is something that we cannot forget, and I must say it is obviously coming from centuries, and it can only now get better. Buddhism has actually spread to all aspects of social life in Mongolia, cultural, social life. In every walk of life, there are Buddhist traditions which we revere, which we respect, which we honor today. And we connect this to India. And as you know, your Honorable Prime Minister, Narendra Modi, he said that Mongolia and India are spiritual neighbors. Although we are geographically, we are thousands of kilometers away, but spiritually, we are very much close and bonded to India through Buddhist and Buddhism, Buddhism culture, Buddhist culture and Buddhist heritage. And we take a lot of pride in this ties that we have with India. India has been promoting Buddhism through various initiatives, 
including facilitating pilgrimages to sacred sites like Bodh Gaya and Sarnath where Buddha attained enlightenment and delivered his first sermon. The government supports the restoration and preservation of ancient Buddhist monuments and artifacts, preserving the rich heritage of the faith. Promotion of Buddhist studies in academic institutions, cultural exchanges and the dissemination of Buddhist literature further contribute to India's efforts in promoting the teachings and values of Buddhism both domestically and internationally. Let's now discuss the escalating instability in Pakistan's Khyber Pakhtunkhwa province, where Pashtuns have been increasingly targeted by security forces, leading to a sudden surge in enforced disappearances. Amidst ongoing targeted killings and arbitrary detentions in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, Pashtun political activists residing in Europe have raised their concerns at the United Nations Human Rights Council. We have this report. A significant number of Pashtuns organized an anti-Pakistan protest in front of the United Nations office to denounce the crackdown on workers and leaders of the Pashtun Tahafuz movement. The protest, held during the 55th session of the United Nations Human Rights Council, was organized by PTM Europe and joined by many Afghan Pashtuns. We are organizing a protest demonstration in front of the United Nations Human Rights Council to denounce the systematic use of torture by Pakistan to stifle our freedom of expression and uh, our right to assembly. Here, the speakers uh, have condemned the torture of the PTM leader Manzoor Ahmed Bashin, the arbitrary detention of Nurullah Tarin, who is languishing in jail for the last four months, and also this uh, great human rights defender Idris Khatak, um, who is languishing in jail for the last uh, few years. Afridi also emphasized that these human rights violations are a matter of grave concern for defenders of human rights and urged the international community, particularly the United Nations, to take notice. The protesters also urged the United Nations to intervene to stop the systematic torture against human rights defenders, journalists and PTM activists of Pashtun ethnic minority including Gilamin Wazir, Eid ur Rahman Wazir and Zakim Wazir. They called upon the international community to compel Pakistan to release arbitrarily detained PTM activists and leaders including Noor Ullah Tareen and Idris Khatak. PTM Europe uh, members are here together uh, with a heavy heart uh, to shed light uh, to, uh, on the great injustices uh, that uh, PTM members face in Pashtun, Baloch, uh, Sindhis, Kashmiris face in, in, uh, in Pakistan. We are here to make, uh, to be their wise. Uh, you know, uh, forced disappearances, uh, ra uh, raids on homes, unlawful uh, arrests, torture of men, women, even children, and targeted killings are regular occurrences in Pashtun Belt and also in Balochistan. That's why we are here to be their wise, to show uh, for the world uh, and, and to ask attention of them. The Pashtuns also expressed solidarity with the protest sit-ins at Chaman and Angura Adda on the controversial Durand line dividing Pashtuns. Time now for Asia This Week, the stories from across the continent. Casio ships many products worldwide including the Gakuhan Scientific Calculator to expand math education globally. Supported by students, professors and governments, Casio aims to enhance logical thinking skills among students through its Gakuhan Calculator. 
Casio leads training efforts and contributes to the development of students' critical thinking abilities. Casio Calculator is our baby project in Education Resource Center. We have a Casio Calculator lab for science and mathematics students, and that is to drive on the perfect use of our calculator to ensure accuracy. Casio's efforts extend beyond releasing scientific calculators to the market. The company is also committed to expanding education in logical thinking. This initiative aims to contribute to the attainment of a brighter future worldwide. Residents of Iraq's holy city of Najaf voiced concerns over the shortage of natural clean water in the city as experts say much of the water supply is contaminated through sewage and contains heavy metals that can cause diseases. Mohsen al Karawi, a resident of the city, stands near streams of water running through heaps of garbage which he says has been building up and polluting the local water for around five years with little action to fix the issue. Safa Majid, a professor specializing in the studies of environment and pollution, said the water taken to labs for testing revealed a high concentration of elements and compounds like lead and zinc at levels that exceed internationally recognized safety limits. While many residents have resorted to buying clean water from the markets, some of the city's water is getting treated at filtering water stations, where the polluted river water is first filtered before being treated with chemicals like chlorine to kill harmful bacteria. JCB Japan's International Credit Card ensures convenience for foreign tourists in Tokyo metropolitan area. Annually, 9 million foreigners check in and out at Narita Airport, where JCB provides a calm, resting environment for foreign card holders. Many tourists who travel from Narita Airport to Yuino in Tokyo prefer to take the Keisei Skyliner. It helps to complete the distance of around 60 kilometers in just 36 minutes. The Tokyo Metro Network is the most convenient transportation option in the Tokyo metropolitan area. It offers the Tokyo subway ticket and all you can ride pass for foreign visitors. Additionally, JCB provides original pass cases to foreign JCB card holders. Takia, a renowned souvenir shop in the Okachimachi area of Tokyo, also offers a 10% discount to foreign JCB card holders. JCB is targeting foreign visitors to the Tokyo metropolitan area. Its hospitality is dynamically shaped to provide a satisfactory tour experience for foreigners. Pokhara is a popular tourist destination in Nepal. An international airport was constructed here with financial and technical assistance from China. Since its inauguration in January last year, the airport has not seen any frequent international flights except for the chartered Chinese flights which appear on rare occasions. After the failure of the airport project, Nepal has now requested China to convert the loan into a grant. Pokhara International Airport was constructed after an agreement between Nepal and China on March 21, 2016. Both neighbours reached a loan agreement, stipulating a total loan amount of Chinese Yuan 1.37 billion, out of which 355.9 million Chinese Yuan was constituted as interest-free loan. The Civil Aviation Authority of Nepal, the aviation regulating body of the Himalayan nation, is responsible for paying the loan amount by the year 2036. Critics argued that China's loan terms may impose heavy debt burdens on Nepal, leading to potential economic dependency and loss of sovereignty. A year after its inauguration, the airport has failed to attract revenue and Prime Minister 
Pushpa Kamal Dehel has announced that diplomatic efforts have been initiated with China to convert the loan for Pokhara International Airport to a grant. Pokhara Biman Stal Bata Antrahti Uran Sanchalan Tata Bebastapan Ka Lagi Sajvanik Niji Sajedari Ko Adar Tayar Gorna Samiti Gathan Bhai Kare Bhai Rai Ko Jankari Gorauna Chanchu समिति को प्रतिवेदन का आधार में विमान स्थल संचालन तथा अंतर्राष्ट्रीय उड़ान का बारे में आवश्यक व्यवस्था मिलाई ने छा पोखरा अंतर्राष्ट्रीय विमान स्थल निर्माण का लागी लिए को रीन लाई अनुदान का रूप में रूपांतरण करना कुटनीतिक पहल शुरू करिए को छा इस संग जोड़िए का वित्तीय व्यवस्थापन का वि� played a pivotal role in the Pokhara Airport project. It imported building materials and machinery from China and the airport itself was brimming with Chinese-made security and industrial technology. Despite China's claims about the project's quality, an investigation by the New York Times revealed an unsettling narrative. There are fears that China's strategic interests could overshadow Nepal's long-term economic sustainability with accusations of opaque negotiations and lack of transparency in the loan agreement. Some voices caution against potential hidden agendas behind China's purportedly benevolent gestures, urging Nepal to treat cautiously in its dealings with the economic giant. Prime Minister Dehl, upon his arrival back to Kathmandu last year after his visit to China, had announced that Chinese flights would come to Pokhara, helping to cover the loss. No such flights have commenced since his visit in September last year. Halei bhai ko mero Chin Brahman ka swandar ma Chin ka bivinna sahar oru bata antarastey udan sidei Pokhara antarastey biman istar ma leona ko lagi. छलफल रहा है सैद्धांतिक सहमति मैं विश्वास छिट्टे तस्ता अंतरराष्ट्रीय उड़ान पोखरा अंतरराष्ट्रीय विमान स्थल में आने रो समस्या को समाधान होने दी कंस्ट्रक्शन अफ पोखरा एयरपोर्ट बाई चाइना हेज रेस्ड कंसर्न्स अबाउट द क्वालिटी अफ वर्क दी मेनिपुलेशन अफ ओवर साइट एंड दी बर्डन अफ डेड ऑन नेपाल Additionally, the airport's association with China's Belt and Road Initiative has ignited diplomatic tensions with India, making it challenging for the airport to attract international flights. The sacred month of Ramadan has recently begun, marking an occasion celebrated with immense joy and enthusiasm worldwide. It is more than just fasting. The month is observed with traditional fervour, immersing individuals in the spirit of devotion, self-reflection and generosity. Muslims across South Asia observe sacred fasting from dawn to dusk, dedicating themselves to prayer. Take a look. As the crescent moon graces the sky, it signals the beginning of holy month of Ramadan. Muslims across South Asia offer prayers in various mosques to mark the festivities. Ramadan is the ninth month of Islamic calendar during which Muslim disciples abstain from consuming food or water from dusk till dawn. Believers commence their day with sehri or suhoor, a pre-dawn meal, and conclude it with iftar, a lavish evening meal. They rejoice in these moments with their family and friends while sharing food and fostering strong connections. Following the practice of Prophet Muhammad, the fast is traditionally broken with dates and water. A full iftar feast, which varies according to cultures and places, follow this tradition. Ramzan ke pehle Jume ko yaha ja masjid idgar Lakhnu mein bhi aur tamam masajid mein pur sukoon andaz mein logon ne namaz ada ki Allah ke aage duaein farman duaein ki apne mulk ki hifazat aur tamir aur tarakki ke liye bhi duaein ki hain. Similar scenes can be found all over Pakistan as the nation's rich regional and ethnic diversity. Cause it to gleam day and night with festive lights during Ramadan. Thousands of residents in Islamabad are flocking to shop to buy dates, fruit, sweets, and other food items hours before iftar. Some of the things that are popular here are very popular. The restaurant is very necessary to have an addition to Ramadan. So we are taking it. Inshallah, 
और लेके जाते हैं खाते हैं पहला रमज़ान है आपको पता है यार वैसे भी महंगाई बहुत ज़्यादा हो गया बट ये है कि वीक में एक दो दफ़ा तो हमें भी तो जायका चखना चाहिए ना ट्राई मारनी चाहिए Nepal the Himalayan nation also drinks into this month long Ramadan festival during the holy fasting hundreds of muslim offer namaz at the famous kashmiri mosque in capital kathmandu bana dekhi aba ami bana ami seri garchu seri bhanda keri aba ami kati baje uthchu bhanepachi bana tei 3 baje uthchu hana ani 4:45 ma 4 heri time huncha tyo samay samay ami khai khane kura haru khai saknu parcha रेस पीछे व्रत बस्तु दिनभरी दिन में पानी भी खानु होते के खानु होते खानेकुरा तेस पच्चीस हमी दिन में नमाज पढ़् सब ठाने हो कि हमी दिन में पांच पटक नमाज पढ़् पर्व मुस्लिम सो अब पांच टाइम को नमाज हो बिहान बिहान फजर को टाइम होस पच्चीस दिवसों जोहर को रेस पीछे असर ते पच्चीस मग्रिब ते पच्चीस ईसा अब हमी व्रत खोल रोजा खोल समय हो मग्रिब को समय में तो हम साँझ कति छ बजे ती छ बजे देखि उ समय बढ़ते जाँ घट फास्टिंग डूरिंग रमदान इज वन अफ द फाइव पिलर्स और ड्यूटीज अफ इस्लाम अलॉंग विद द टेस्टमनी अफ फेथ प्रेयर चैरिटेबल गिविंग एंड मेकिंग अ पिलग्रिमेज टू मेका इट इज इंटेंडेड टू ब्रिंग द डेवर्ड क्लोजर टू गॉड एंड टू रिमाइंड दैम अफ द सफरिंग अफ दोज लेस फॉर्चुनेट रमदान कलमिनेट्स इन ईद उल फितर टू सेलिब्रेट द ब्रेकिंग अफ द फास्ट Fasting during the month of Ramadan is an act of obedience, self-control and a means to draw closer to God. And with that, we come to the end of this week's episode. See you next week. Goodbye and take care. People have to live in in unity. We are still in transition. Civil society has been decimated. Of course we rely on media. And I think the government has not done enough. The international community has failed to respond. No place in the world is perfect.